Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is a White Knight tumble dryer. Let's see, does it have a number on it somewhere? I don't see one. C3A. 3 kilo, I think, machine, because it says it here. Um, and it has a fault. Let's try and replicate the fault. Power on. Um, it's not turning. Let's turn it off quickly. So, let's... I think I just turned that back like that. There's a police, someone's coming looking for me outside, I can hear it. The top's not screwed on. I found it on the street. It's a natty little machine. Metal lid, metal top. And let's plug it on, turn it on again. And... It's turning now, which makes me think which makes me think that the motor start capacitor isn't working. I would say clearly isn't working. So, can we... Can we get into it? Let's turn it around. The motor's at the bottom somewhere. I think... I think I'm gonna have to take... The motor will be... Yeah, the motor's down here, probably closer to the front. I either want to take the bottom off which doesn't come off, so I'm gonna have to take the back off. And it's probably got a hundred screws, so let's just start screwing. Start screwing around. Right. The timer is still clicking. I've got a box to put my stuff in. I'm gonna take off the cover on the back as well check if there's any dust and lint built up in there and to get the back off I might have to get at the bearing anyway so it's no harm Right, maybe this will just pop off. I don't know what this red thing up here does. It's kind of glued on a bit. Right, there it is. Mm, looks okay. A little bit of dust built up there. Bit of heating here, so we'll have a look at what's going on there. Mm, I don't know if it can actually. No, it seems to be held on with a few screws. But it's got a solid element, like a kettle, rather than the little wavy elements that you often get. So I need to get this fellow off by the looks of things and it looks to be held on with a one-way one -way ticket to disaster. It appears to be fitted with a snap ring. That's what I'm saying down here. It's no good. Hmm. Ooh, okay. But I can see the capacitor is just here. So, if I want to slice my arms open, maybe I can do it without going too hard. The other one is to get the drum out. The drum... <laughs> the drum just rests on two nylon bearings. Let's have a look at this. So in here, the drum just rests on two nylon bearings in here. Let's see if I can... Yeah, just see that white thing in the center of the picture there? Those are bushes or something, and the drum just rests on them. There's a bit of lint built up in there, but nothing major. That looks to be a bimetallic switch, just in here in the center, presumably for overheating. And there is scorching, I can see, on the tin work in there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but it's not, it's not bad, it's just heat. So the capacitor is just in there. Let's see if we can show it to you. There, you can see it there. So I've got a 13 mil spanner. And it seems to be enough to take it off. So it's not the worst job in the world, really. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. We can just about see, what have we got? Eight microfarad. Two wire arrangement. So let's see, let's check in my box. So by sheer good luck, I have another one that says eight on it. Uh, eight microfarads, and it has two connections. So let's pull those 
jumpers off. It doesn't matter if I recall correctly which way around these go. So I won't be able to see what's going on here, are we? I want, you to, I want you to see my keyhole surgery. The issue is getting two hands in. So, uh, it's tricky. There's two wires on one side and one on the other side. I don't have enough. I need a jumper spade connector and I don't have one. So let's just check if I have a better, ca better capacitor. So I found a seven with the right number of connectors. The other way would be that if I could make up a piggyback connector uh, to go on top, I'd get the 8 on it. So I could make one up out of this fellow by taking this off here and putting a female connector on... Er, come off. Putting a female connector on the end of this red wire, that would work, but I'm going to just try the 7 in it and not faff around so much. Now, keyhole surgery time. I've got it open as far as I can, I think. That's about it. I can't really get two hands. So red goes on one side and the two blues, is it, go on the other. It seems about right. Oh, and they're on really, really tight. I do it with one hand. Right, I've got red off. They don't seem to have locking connectors on them, which is positive. So there's the old one. If you want to press pause, you can get a feel for what's going on there. Um, seven. Now, how am I going to get this on? There isn't much space on the wiring side. I'm trying to squeeze my two hands in. I don't know if you can see any of this now. I've just got one hand in above. And... Like that and like that. Then red goes on the other side. I hope I took that reading correctly. I don't know if you can see anything here. Get the capacitor back in. It might not work because I've put the wrong capacitance in, but the reality is that the seven could be depleted down to two. The eight could be depleted down to two as well, so you don't know. The capacitance might be shagged on both of these capacitors. I don't, I don't know. Let's tighten this up. Where's my spanner? I'm going to need to put a few screws on the back to see if it'll hold together. Oh, there we go. I bent the blades on that fan from doing this. So I'll put a few screws in and we'll try and get it going. So I have put some screws in and I have to bend this back a bit. Just like that. It's turning freely. Well, you'll see the fan as much as anything if I plug this in now and see if it'll go. So, let's plug it in. Maybe it'll go. And we're live. And we're on. And we're off. Look at that. Wonderful. So then, the next thing would be to test the elements. So what I'm going to do is vacuum out all of this stuff. Uh, vacuum out in here, and as much as I can around and about. There wasn't much, there's dust in the bottom, but it wasn't, it wasn't that much. It wasn't so bad. So I'll give it a general clean. I might take the um, screws out again and just give it a bit of a better clean if I can get anything in with the vacuum cleaner brush. And then we'll give it a test. So I did the best job I could, but you really, because of this thing here, this fan blade thing, you can't really get in completely. Now, I don't, I don't think it just pulls off because I'm pulling on it and it's not coming off. I think there's a kind of a one-way clip in here that you can push it on but not get it off. So that's where we are. It turns freely and it's not hitting. I've bent the blades back. One blade got caught whenever I was trying to reinstall the back panel, um, but I've sorted that out now. 
it's relatively clean. I'm not going to take off. I'm not going to take off this element because when looking in, it just looks clean inside, and it's not a little fine wire one with fluff in it. It's a big element, so I'm not touching it. And then up on top here, this fellow. This fellow here is a thermal trip. Um, if the machine's not getting hot, the first thing you do is press that button. You may have to take the back off to do that, but there's also this red red button on the back here. I don't know, does it pop out or what? It's got an O-ring on it. I'll show you what I mean now. It's a weird kind of a thing there. It's got an O-ring on the back to hold it in place, presumably, and then this kind of... It looks like it's in two parts, but I can only see one of them. So it might be possible to push this in with a screwdriver or something. Let me just check. The screwdriver goes into it, but it doesn't seem to do anything. So maybe you do have to take the back off. But so that's uh, that goes in like that. Or maybe it just has enough spring that it'll push the... It is sitting on the thermal fuse, so maybe you just put it in and wiggle it or something. Let's put a screwdriver in and wiggle it. I don't know. Right, I'll put the back cover on, and we'll give that a test. Okay then, I've cleaned out the pipe and the ductwork as best I can. I've checked the thermal fuse. The machine itself feels okay. There's one, two, and probably three. Yeah, there it is, a little nylon rubber or bushing or something. So the machine doesn't have any bearings as such, it has bushings. Right, it's on low heat, it's turned on. It's working. You can see it turning on top. You can't see it, but it is turning. So I'll let it get hot for a few minutes, and we'll check if we'll check if the um, the low element is working. And then after a few minutes, I'll turn it on to the high heat. We'll check if the high is working. And then the only job left is to fit the top. But you know, it's working. It looks like it's wobbling, but um, it's just the tape isn't on straight. <laughs> They've sealed the drum with tape on each end. So this won't mean much to you, but when I put my hand over here, I could feel it getting hot, getting warm. So in a very non-scientific way, I've just switched on the high heat and we'll see if it gets even hotter. So it's a lot hotter now on the high setting. Um, that's positive. What I will do is get the energy meter on it and just have a look and see if it shows a difference. So I've got it set to low. If you can see that, we're getting 725-ish watts. And if I put it onto high, so that, what that means is that the element's drawing something, which is a probably the element's probably drawn about 600 watts. I put it onto high, and it's uh, gone up to 1.3, nearly 1.4 kilowatts. So that all makes sense. Can you see that at all? There you go, 1.3, 1358 watts. Um, so it's working, and it seems to be heating, and it's starting as well, which is the main thing. So if we open the door. It's hot inside now because it's obviously working and it's uh, when we close it it works again so this capacitor here the old eight microfarad was it microfarads yeah eight microfarad well it's for scrap it's rubbish seven was adequate to get it going and the seven must have had enough of a kick to get it going um, but yeah save your spare parts if you're ever scrapping something out because this is the first time I've ever actually repaired one, but having two or three of them in a box meant that I had a spare part ready to go when I needed it. So that's a success. I'll put the top back on. It didn't come with screws, so I'll just bung some screws into the back. And uh, job's a good one. Questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, thanks for watching. 
any observations on what I did or anything I did wrong, tell me about it, because it's the only way I'll learn. Um, and subscribe uh, if you haven't already. See you later. Thanks for watching.